Hi guys, welcome back to Snakes and Adders Introducing Series, episode 32. I'm super excited to do this episode and we've been waiting for an example to be able to do this with. So a lot of people ask about this species a lot. They've had a real resurgence and a huge boost in popularity. So it's about time that we covered the Mexican black king snake, Lampropeltis getula nigritus. It was first described by Zweifel and Norris in 1955 and it makes up part of the common king snake complex. The other subspecies that exist within that complex are Lampropeltis getula getula which is the eastern chain, Lampropeltis getula brooksi which is the brooks or south florida king snake, Lampropeltis getula californiae which is the californian king snake, Lampropeltis getula floridana which is the florida king snake, Lampropeltis getula holbrookii which is the speckled king snake, Lampropeltis is Getula means eye which is the Apalachola king snake which we've also done an episode on within this series so check that out Lampropeltis getula niger which is the eastern black king snake and Lampropeltis getula splendida which is the desert king snake these are the most southerly occurring subspecies of the group and their natural distribution includes the Sonora Desert, northwestern Sinaloa, and small pockets of southern Arizona. The regions of Arizona they're known to naturally integrate with the California king snakes, Lampropeltis getula california, and the desert king snake, Lampropeltis getula splendida, within that range. The activity patterns of the snake vary throughout the year where they're from the weather is quite extreme and in summer it's very very hot indeed so these snakes are predominantly nocturnal during winter but as we go through spring and fall or spring and autumn uh, they will to become crepuscular coming out at dawn and dusk and then in winter they will become diurnal using their black coloration to bask and absorb as much of the heat from the day as they can this is a stocky well set snake although in captivity they do tend towards obesity and that is because uh, these guys are keen feeders and to try and avoid being bitten people tend to overfeed them and they become a bit too fat but these will challenge even the most heavy set of the subspecies within the group including the florida king and the eastern chain so these are chunky snakes when full grown mature size can be anything from three and a half to five feet in length um, they have a somewhat of a, a reputation as having a predilection for fingers but if they're handled regularly and worked with uh, from an early age there's absolutely zero reason why these snakes can't be friendly but some just are hair triggers their eyesight's not particularly brilliant and the eyesight that they have uh, is is more um, more tuned towards movement so moving into the tank and moving fingers in front of the snake's face can lead to problems uh, there are myths surrounding the patination with Mexican black kings and the, the weird echo chamber online that, that all Mexican black babies must be born jet black and it is simply not true. They are born oftentimes with vestigial saddulation down their backs and they may have some white speckling and some white speckling to the chin and the chin speckles may remain for a good few years usually within the first year of age the patination will completely disappear and you'll have a jetback snake but on occasion little bits of vestigial patination particularly to the ventrum the belly scales may still occur and it's not to be oh wow i've got this hybrid blood everybody who's this snake's been bred for 30 plus years and everybody who's produced them in the past knows that the babies come out with saddles with bits of pattern and this fades away and disappears through time and it's perfectly normal but the internet being the internet has decided that this isn't true when it simply is um so this species has seen well i'm not going even going to underestimate it somewhat of a resurgence doesn't seem to cover it there is a mad appetite for this species within the hobby currently uh, and you know these snakes were 10 a penny in the mid 90s oftentimes selling for 15 20 pounds 
uh, and you, you know a lot of people kept them we still enjoyed the black pine nation but realistically this is like the poster child of what can happen with human avarice in the reptile trade when everybody doubles down onto corn snakes and royal pythons and foregoes breeding the other common stuff it doesn't stay common and then becomes rare and the prices for these animals varies considerably but uh, these are now even as babies oftentimes sold for well north of a hundred pounds which to anybody who's been in this hobby for 20 years or more will find that totally baffling but that's the hobby that we live in mexican blacks are same as every other king egg layers um, they'll produce between 12 and 20 eggs they're good size eggs they can be incubated at standard colubrid temperatures of 28 to 29 Celsius. And we would use a medium of vermiculite, which we would mix, mix four parts to one with water. And they'll hatch after 55 to 65 days. Um, there's no real seasoning or cycling needed for this subspecies, being that they are as southern as they are. Um, maybe just a gentle cycle and they will breed readily. Remember, you know, a long time ago, these... These were not uh, a rare snake. A lot of people kept them and bred them with success. They're not a challenging species to reproduce, which potentially, uh, you know, you may have to look to this little boom that they're having at the minute. As, as people start getting them, they're not going to have a challenge breeding them. And, uh, you know, it may not last forever, uh, the boom. It may be a bust before long. Um, but that said, realistically, do we need to concentrate on the, on the uh, value when we can concentrate on just how? fabulous looking the snake is what a striking species absolutely stunning hatchlings present next to no issues in raising they feed readily they grow fast um, and you should have next to no problems with them um, if you're gonna introduce a pair for breeding make sure they are well fed wet make sure they are matched for size to try and avoid any issues with cannibalism so uh, king snakes will eat other snakes and mexican blacks uh, coupled with their uh, heightened appetite uh, you may well have some issues there so you want to make sure that they are paired for size and very well fed and don't feel that they need to eat their their cage mate as a meal and instead will try to procreate with them as far as the adult vivarium size goes probably a one meter vivarium or three foot vivarium by 18 by 18 with multiple hide sites a basking area of around 30 to 31 degrees celsius and a cool end of about 24 celsius they can cool down to 24 degrees at night and then midwinter would maybe take this down to 18 or 19 for a short period and this will encourage a breeding cycle to take place like i said not complex an incredibly easy snake to keep very very hardy wonderfully tame if worked with regularly you'll have no problems simply fantastic and from a beauty perspective i can fully comprehend why people find these so alluring they're absolutely stunning we'll be back with more videos soon keep an eye on the page we're always trying to do educational videos from me and paul at snakes and adders we'll see you soon peace